Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a number theory problem. We have 3a squared plus 3a plus 7 equals b cubed. a and b are integers and we're going to be looking for solutions to this equation. Now this is called the Diophantine equation because the solutions are integer, integers. And this problem is actually from Turkish math Olympiads. Now, a lot of times when I solve a problem, before I solve the problem, or either at the end, I will show you the solution from Wolfram Alpha, right? And when I prompt Wolfram Alpha about this problem for integer solutions, it gave me the following results. I don't understand why some people are you know, get kind of defensive when I say, well, from alpha can't solve this problem, obviously, in the case of the sum of powers of i. Yes, the prompt is kind of ambiguous, but I was expecting it to understand uh, the pattern. At least it could come up with a pattern. Anyways, that's something that I don't really understand. I just wanted to share with you real quick. Let's go ahead and see how we can tackle these kinds of problems. Obviously, we have a cubic piece and a sort of like a quadratic piece. If we had both quadratics, then we could try the quadratic formula. But in this case, do you think using the quadratic formula will help us? Probably not. But if you tried it, it would probably look like this. And it might. I haven't tried it, so I'm not exactly sure. But if you go ahead and kind of solve for A, because uh, solving for B isn't really going to help you that much. And here we can kind of write down uh, what the formula is going to give us, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, right? And then this becomes the following. Inside the radical, let's go ahead and focus on the discriminant or delta. Delta is going to be 9 minus 12 times 7 minus b cubed. And we can basically write it as 9 minus 84 plus 12b cubed or 12b cubed minus 85, right? That's a negative, I mean a 75. Okay, not the 85, obviously minus 75. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. So here's the thing. We want delta to be a perfect square because if we're going to get any integer solutions from here, first of all, this piece needs to be a perfect square under the radical so that we can take it out and we're going to add two integers hopefully that sum is also going to be divisible by six and at the end we're going to get an integer value and obviously this should also give us an integer value for b right so we need to explore if this can be made a perfect square obviously i can't set it equal to a squared but maybe how about c squared and this gives us a very interesting equation which is 12b cubed minus c squared equals 75. So it's kind of like a mixture of a cubic and a quadratic, which is what we had at the beginning. But obviously, this equation is simpler, right? Don't you think? Now, for these kinds of equations, unless you can factor the left-hand side, which would be awesome, by the way, uh, you can go ahead and look at modular arithmetic. Uh, for example, what is the left-hand side in mod 3? Mod 3, this is a 0, and that's a 0. This kind of tells us that c must be, uh, um, I mean, c squared must be divisible by 3. In other words, c squared is 3 times something. But that also means that c is a multiple of 3, because if c is not a multiple of 3, its squared is not going to be a multiple of 3 either. Make sense? You can kind of test it out with 3k plus minus 1. Square this, and you'll always get a remainder, right? So since c is a multiple of 3, we can kind of write it as 3k, and then plug it in, we get 12b cubed minus, when you square that, you're going to get 9k squared equals 75, and then we can go ahead and divide everything by 3, that gives us 4b cubed minus 3k squared equals 25. I'm not sure if solving this problem would be a little easier, but we can kind of proceed in a similar manner, maybe we'll look at it mod 2 or mod 5 or other mods, but again, this is not a guaranteed solution because you never know which mod is going to give you the solution or tell you that there are no solutions. You see, sometimes you can get infinitely many solutions, sometimes no solutions, and sometimes you get a finite number. Okay, cool. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can, you know, tackle this problem a little differently. So we can go ahead and consider this our first attempt. 
it's not a complete solution and then this will be our second attempt okay so here's the problem again 3a squared plus 3a plus 7 is equal to b cubed and we're looking for integer solutions all right so first thing i want you to notice is hopefully you did notice that if i can split up the one and write this as 3a squared plus 3a plus 6 plus 1 not only is this going to be a multiple of 3 but also when i subtract 1 from b cubed it's going to be factorable so that's really nice we're kind of making both sides factorable by doing this so let's go ahead and do that so now the left hand side can be written as 3 times a squared plus a plus 2 which is clearly a multiple of 3 and the right hand side can actually be factored as a difference of two cubes you hopefully know that identity which is a very important formula in algebra and then here's what we get great now what does this mean we have a multiple of three and that is equal to this product right here so this may basically means that three divides this product i hope you are familiar with this notation if not this just means that hey this thing here is a multiple of three right so in other words three divides a multiple of three makes sense three always divides 3m i always get confused with this but then i kind of th oops i kind of think about it this way divide the right hand side with the left hand side and you should get an integer makes sense that's how i learned div divides anyway so this means divides so three divides that product but that's such an interesting result so we're going to be looking at different cases because if 3 divides a product, looking at it from a mod 3 perspective, we have three different cases. B can be divisible by 3, B can leave a remainder of 1 or a 2 mod 3. Make sense? So, let's go ahead and take a look at each case. If B is 0 mod 3, by the way, that means congruent to, right? Then, we're going to get the following. This product is going to be, we're going to evaluate this product mod 3, okay? What is that going to be? Well, think about it this way. Pick a number like 3. That's 0 mod 3 because it's divisible by 3. 3 minus 1 is going to be a 2. And 3 squared plus 3 plus 1 is just going to be 13. And 2 times 13 is going to be 26. And that leaves a remainder of 2 mod 3. So that's going to be a 2. Make sense? But you could also look at it this way. This is 0 mod 3. This is 0 mod 3. This is going to leave a remainder of 1. This is 0 mod 3, that's going to leave a remainder of negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, and negative 1 is congruent to 2 mod 3, because in mod 3, you're allowed to add multiples of 3 to any side you want, because 3 is basically 0. Make sense? Great, second case. If B is 1 mod 3, I'm not going to write mod 3, because hopefully that's understood, then we have this product, let's take a look at it, right? Now, this is going to be 0. Why? Because this is 0 and the whole product is 0. Great. So that's kind of nice. And if B is 2 mod 3, then this product is going to be 1. You can also quickly check it out. And since we want this product to be divisible by 3, you know what that means? It means that the B you're looking for must be 1 mod 3. So the only B that satisfies this equation has to be in this form. So if B can be written as 3K plus 1, then b minus 1 can be written as 3k and b minus 1 times b squared plus b plus 1 is going to be 3k times now i'm going to replace b with 3k plus 1 so i'm going to square that 9k squared plus 6k plus 1 and then this b is going to be 3k plus 1 and then plus 1 which is the one at the end so this product is going to be the following 9k squared plus 9k plus 3 awesome we can take out another 3 here which is going to give us 3k times 3 times 3k squared plus 3k plus 1 which is kind of like a 9k times 3k squared plus 3k plus 1 guess what we want this product to be divisible by 3 not only that it's also divisible by 9 make sense so let's go ahead and take a look at it this way we had 3 times a squared plus a plus 2 equals the right hand side and remember that was b minus 1 times b squared plus b plus 1 from b cubed minus 1 
and we just found out that this can be written as 9k times something. Since this is also an integer, how about calling that n? So this is going to be 9kn. So this product right here is just going to be 3kn if we divide both sides by 3, right? So we got a squared plus a plus 2 equals 3 times an integer times another integer, which is also an integer. In other words, you want this to be a multiple of 3. But guess what? That's not possible. Because if a is 0 mod 3 or 2 mod 3, then a squared plus a plus 2, take a look at it. If a is 0 mod 3, these are going to be 0 and you're going to end up with 2. If a is 2 mod 3, this is going to be a times a plus 1, which is a multiple of 3 again, because 2 times 3 plus 2 is going to be 2 mod 3 again. So this is always going to be 2 mod 3 if a is 0 or 2 mod 3. If a is 1 mod 3, then this is going to be the following. This is 1, this is 1, and this is 2. So you're going to have uh, 1 mod 3. In other words, in other words, this can never be a multiple of 3. Therefore, there are no solutions, I mean, integer solutions to this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.